Okay. So, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we are going to start the design of a two-way solid slab. The previous classes we have learned basics of uh, drawing bending moments, finding uh, the coefficients, finding the bending moments for the two-way slabs, and as well as one-way one-way solid slab. Today's class is going to be about the design of a two-way solid slab from the beginning. We are taking a problem from the beginning till the end, till we reach to the uh, the last detailing of the problem. Now, the only different method that I'm using in this particular uh, in this particular lecture, which I didn't use previously. In the previous lectures, I used to solve manually for you through writing. Now here I have kept all the steps so you can follow up. Now, if you couldn't follow up, or if I was very fast, let me know, so I'll slow down my, my speed. Are we okay with that? Are we fine with that? Okay. Yes, mister. Okay. So in today's class, we are going to solve this particular problem. We are going to solve this particular problem. Now the problem says we have um, the park floor of an office building is shown in the figure below. So we have group of offices, okay? And they have asked us to, to design a certain slab. So once again, the park floor of an office building is shown in figure below. It consists of a restrained slabs for monolithically. When I say monolithically, it means I'm referring that the slabs and the uh, slabs and beams are bored together. I mean, the concrete is uh, bored together for both slabs and beams. And this is happening whenever we are talking about regular construction or uh, cast in city. When you go to the site, you will see that we don't cast, we don't bore the concrete for the beams and the slabs separately. Beams and slabs are bored together. Column is a separate uh, boring, uh, what you call, uh, step. Foundation is separate as well, but when it comes to beams and column, I mean beams and foundation, we have them to be the same, the same casting or the same boring. Okay, and this is referred to monolithically bored or monolithically casted. Now it says we have edge beams with edge, with the edge beams. The slab is 175 mm thick. And the loading is as follows. So here in this particular problem, they have given us the loading already. They have given us the dead load and life load. In the previous problem that we have solved, we learned how to get the values or the loading from the code. Okay. So you can expect any of these two methods in your examination. Okay. So the dead load has been given to be 6.2. Now when I refer to the when I refer as dead load, it's always referred as finishes. Always your dead load is referred to finishes, or there is another name for it, which is called as super dead load. And this super dead load normally refers to two things refers to AC load, which are the compressors, and then the second thing, the water tank. Since their, their value or their intensity is huge, we call it as a super. Super means a high value of dead load. Okay. Now, anyhow, we have a dead load of 6.2. We have an imposed load of 2.5 given. It says for us to design the corner slab for mild condition using grade 35 of concrete and grade 460 of, uh, of steel. Now, once again, the first thing that I need to check, the first thing that I need to check that the grades have been given already. So C35 has been given for us. Grade 460 has been given for us as well. Okay. Now, which slab I'm going to, to design? They say for me that it's going to be the corner slab. So we are referring to this slab. And then they said, we are going to design it for mild condition. So 
So we are not going we are not going to design it for fire. We are only designing it for mild conditions. So it's very important for you to understand and analyze the question before you start. Okay. So once again, they said for us that the slabs and beams are bored together. So this is going to be restrained, or is it going to be a simply supported piece? When I say that the slab and the beam are bored together, will there be any connectivity between them? If they have been casted together, will they be linked to each other? Yes. So in this case, it's going to be restrained. If it's restrained, then I should be using the table for restraint. Okay. And then they have given us already the thickness of the slab. And they have given us the loading. So the things are very smooth about this particular problem. The only thing, once again, we need to understand the question and what does it require from the beginning. Now, if we go and see, there are certain steps I have written for you here. So the first step is to check whether the slab is one-way or two-way slab. And then we need to, to check the support condition, whether it's restrained or simple support in order for us to use the correct type of uh, table we need to check the material properties whether they have been given or we need to get them from the code so last last class i have taught you that there are there is 250 grade there is 460 there is 500 and i told you that there is a table where we can we can know the grade of concrete as well okay so let's check the material properties if the materials have been already given and specified in the problem then it would be easier for you. If they were not being given, then you need to get them from the code. Check the durability conditions. And once again, we said for durability conditions, we have two things to be taken into account. One is cover, one is minimum damage, if you remember. Cover is to protect my steel. And we said steel is weak in both uh, in terms of fire or in terms of wood. So we need to get the proper cover for water and the proper cover for fire. But in this problem, fire not, has not been given. The fire condition has not been given, so I don't need to check for it. This is only for the purpose of the question. Now, when you are designing a rail building, you should be designing for both. You should be designing for fire resistance, and you should be designing for uh, condition of wood or exposure. And then we said minimum dimension, which will protect the integrity of the, of the section itself. Okay, and then we need to estimate or calculate the effective depth. Uh, and we said if the depth has been given, if the overall depth has been given, then the effective depth is to be calculated. Now, if the overall depth is not given, then I need to estimate. When I'll be doing an estimation, I'll be doing an estimation when there is nothing clear. So if there is a value of overall depth, then effective depth is to be calculated from the overall depth. Now, if the overall depth has not been given, if the effective depth has not been given, then I need to go and estimate. That's why we have written both estimate and calculate. And then we need to go for bending, area of reinforcement. If you remember the failures, bending, area of reinforcement, shear reinforcement, deflection, and then finally the detail. Okay, so we'll go step by step and we'll see what are the things involved. So once again, if you say, now, there are five failures that we are referring to. One is the durability, second is bending, third is shear, uh, third is area of reinforcement or shear. I mean, the sequence can vary, area of reinforcement, shear reinforcement, and then deflection. These are the five failures that we have talked about last class. And then the other things are only checking the type, the support. So I'll choose the correct type of table. Now you'll see the first thing, okay, the first thing it says either either one way or two way slab. So you can see clearly we have a dimension of five and we have a dimension of four. To get Ly over Lx, you can see that Ly over Lx is equal to five divided by four, which is equal to 1.25. Since it's lesser than two, then it's going to be lesser or equal to two, then it's going to be a two way slab. Are we okay till now? Are we fine? Any question about this step? Okay. 
Now, after we check for one way and two way slabs, we are going to go and check the support condition. So once again, it has been clearly said that we are going to use restrained solid slab. And then the other the other uh, comment they have said that the slabs and beams are monolithically constructed, means they have bored together. So we are not going to have a two-way solid, I mean, we are not going to have two-way solid simply supported slab, but we are going to have a restrained slab. Okay, so they have mentioned clearly that it's going to be restrained. Once again, what does it mean? It means that slab and beam are connected together. So it, it's clearly, it's clearly uh, indicated here that we are going to use the big table, not the small table. After, after we have checked which table to be used, after we have checked one way or two way, we are going to check the material properties whether they have been given in the problem or not. So you can see, I have taken a certain part of the question where it says design the corner slab for mild condition using grade 35 and grade 460 reinforcement. Okay, so the grades have been already given. The grade 35 is to be used for concrete and grade 460 to, to be used for the reinforcement. It means that I don't need to go and refer to the codes. These have been given already for that. Okay, so we have, we have checked the materials properties as well. After checking the material properties, we are going to go for the durability. And once again, if you remember, we said there is cover and there is minimum dimension. So it says for you design the corner slab for mild condition using grade 35 and grade 460 reinforcement. Okay. So once again, they have highlighted that it's only mild condition. There is no fire requirement. It means that I don't need to check for the cover of fire and I don't need to check for minimum dimension. Why? Because we said minimum dimension is not related to water. It's only related to, to fire. If you remember. Now, going to the table, going to the table where we can get the cover for the exposure, we can see that these are the defini definitions. We have, which we have defined already last class. We have said it depends on how severe is the water that we are dealing with. When we are dealing with the regular water which is available in the, uh, the vapor the which is available in the weather, or we are talking about the uh, regular humidity, and then the next step is rain, the next step is seawater, and it goes on. You can see that we are turning from a soft scenario to a more severe scenario. Now, in, in, our, in our problem, you can see that it has been clearly mentioned that we are going to use mild. Now, after having the condition to be used mild, once again, if the conditions are not given to you, the condition, if the conditions are not given for you, then you need to use your engineering judgment based on the location that you are, you, you are designing your building for. And fire resistance will help you in, I mean, the nature of the building will help you in assessing how much fire resistance is going to be required. We can go for estimation, uh, calculation of the effective depth. But before doing that, before doing that, there is a slide which is Okay. Whenever, by the way, whenever I update something, you will see that your PowerPoint will be updated in the link. So you don't worry about whatever changes I'm doing in the PowerPoint. It will be updated directly to you. Okay. So durability conditions. Okay. So once again, we said it's mild condition. After checking its mild condition, we are going to check. This is the table which is showing you the cover for the different conditions. So we have mild condition, and then the grade of concrete which has been given is C35. So mild condition and grade of C our grade of concrete C35 
is going to give you a cover of 20. Okay. So from here, we have got the required cover. Now, after getting the required cover, we need to go and calculate our calculate our effective depth. Now, overall depth has been already given. Okay, overall depth has been already given. The cover is calculated. The diameter of the bar can be assumed. So we can go and calculate our effective depth. Just to illustrate, I brought a slab. Um, we have two dimensions. One is LX and one is L. Leave the scaling. It's not up to the scale, but we have LX and we have L1. You can see now we have the white color bars, which are par parallel to X, and these are called reinforcement of X. Okay. These are called reinforcement of X. Once again, the white color reinforcement is parallel to bars are parallel to X, so they are X reinforcement. And then we have the black color bars are parallel to Y, so they are representing Y reinforcement. So now if you can see, we have reinforcement of X and we have reinforcement of, of Y. Now, if we, take, if we take a zoom section from this angle, if we take a zoom section from this particular angle, we will see certain things. Okay, we will see certain things. Now, what you can see, of course, if you are taking it from this particular direction, you can see that we can see only one line, which is white. Because the other white bars are parallel to the first one. Okay. You cannot see the ones after. But you will be able to see the black ones, all of them. Okay. Once again, you will be able only to see one, one white bar because the other bars are on the same level. You cannot see them. They are behind the first bar. But the black ones, you will see them. Now, how to represent that? You can represent it in this way. That this is my LX. What I can see, I can see the first bar, which is white. I cannot see the other bars once again because they are in the same, in the same line. What I can see, I can see that these are the black. Okay, these are the black bars. Once again, you can see, I'll be able to see one white color bar, and then I'll be seeing these black ones. Okay, I'll not be seeing them as line, I'll be seeing them as circle, since that's the cross section. Now for me, to illustrate the concept of effective depth and overall depth, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a zoom section. Okay, I'm, take, I'm going to take a zoom section, and this zoom section is AA, for example. So if I'm taking a zoom section of AA, you can see that in this case, the section from the top compression fiber to the top tension fiber is called an overall depth. And then we have something called dy, and we have something called dx. Now, if you remember, we said the white color represents the reinforcement of x, and the black color is re representing the reinforcement of y. Now, in one-way slab, in one-way slab, you used to have only one d, because there is only one major bending. Now, in case of a two-way solid slab, or in case of a two-way, there will be two major bending. It means that there will be one, reinfo one reinforcement for x, one reinforcement for y, and in both scenarios, um, both are calculated, and in both scenarios, we are going to have one effective depth. So, there will be one effective depth to the center of the reinforcement of y, and there is another one, which is still the center of reinforcement of x, which is to the center of reinforcement of y is called dy, and the one which is to the center of x, we call it dx. Are we clear about dx and dy? Are we, are we clear about dx and dy? Yes, mister. Okay. So now after we, have, after we have seen and understood what's dx and dy, now if we take the zoom section once again, now in the slab it says for us that the slab depth is 175. That was given in the problem. Now we need to calculate our dy and we need to calculate our dx. Taking into account that overall depth is known, taking into account that the cover has been calculated or known from the table to be 20, the diameter can be assumed. Now, if you see here, can you tell me what is, what is the difference between D capital, which is 175, and DX? Now, if you see, okay, if you see, you see the first difference is the cover. The other difference is half of the bar. 
So in this scenario, your dx is something similar to the d you used to calculate. Okay. So in this scenario, if you can see, let me try to make it a bit more organized. So now you can see that dx is equal to, once again, we said this is dx, and the difference between dx and d capital is half of the white bar and then the cover itself. So you can see dx is equal to d capital, the, the, full, the full depth, minus half of the bar, which bar? Minus half of the x bar, okay, minus half of the x bar, which is the white one, minus the cover. Now the cover has been has been calculated from the table or has been verified from the table to be 20. Diameter we can assume it. Normally the slabs will be starting from 10. So if it's not 10, then 12. If it's not 12, then 14. If it's not 14, then 16. But you start from the lowest. So 20, and then we have 10 over 2. We have got our dx equal to 150 ml. Now after calculating dx, we need to calculate dy. Now, if I try to see the difference between dx and dy now, you will see that the difference between them, okay, this is my, So once again, if I try to see, if I try to see, this was my X reinforcement, and this is my Y reinforcement. Now, from here to here, this was DX, and from here to here, this is DY. Now you can see the difference between these two. The difference between these two is this dimension or this distance. Now this distance corresponds to half of this bar, so half of x. And then this one corresponds to half of half of y. So now the difference between dx and dy is half of x plus half of y. Normally, normally we have the reinforcement of x and the reinforcement of y to be having the same diameter. So in that scenario, I can say that dx is going to be equal to d1 plus half of diameter of y plus half of diameter of x. And we said the diameters are the same in most of the cases. So I can say that dx is equal to dy plus one diameter, since the diameters are the same. In the same, in the same uh, concept, I can say that dy is equal to dx minus diameter. Are we clear? Are we fine about this thing? Yes, Mr. Mr. Can you repeat this? Which part? For part the, the dx plus uh, equal dy plus uh, that one cover in this in this in this drawing or in the slide in the drawing mister in this drawing or that one no no in the in slide this in this drawing yeah. so now what you can see you can see that the the brown cover i mean the brown color here represents what represents the cover Okay, and let's say the blue color here is representing the X bar. Okay, the gray color is representing the Y bar. Now for me, we said from the top to the bottom, from the top to the bottom, this is going to be D capital. Now if I want to calculate DX, then my DX is going to equal to d capital. And what are the things to be removed from d capital in order to get dx? 
we need to remove first the cover, this part. So minus the cover, minus half of this bar. So minus half of dx. Now, if I want to calculate dy, then dy is equal to d. Okay, so now I'm going to get the difference between here and here. Now you can see the difference minus the cover. I need to remove the cover first. Minus now full bar. Minus the full bar. Minus the full bar of x. Minus half of the bar of y. Now what we can say, what we can say, we said that the diameter of x is something similar to the diameter of y. Okay, something similar to the diameter of y. So now I can say that dy is equal to d minus cover minus diameter minus another half of diameter. Since diameter of y and diameter of x are the same. Now if you can see, d minus cover and diameter over 2, all of this is going to be your dx. So now I can say that my dy is equal to dx minus them. Are we okay? Matosu? Okay, Mr. Thank you very much. Okay. Others are, are we clear or you have any doubt? It's clear, Mr. Okay, so once again, we return this. So we said, this is your dx, we found it to be 150. This is dy. I wouldn't recommend you to use diameter of x and diameter of y. This is only for illustration. You can take directly dy is equal to dx minus diameter. Now my dx is 150, the diameter is 10. So 150 minus 10 is going to be 140. Okay, so once again, calculate dx and from dx, to calculate dy, reduce one there. So now we have dx and we have dy for our scenario. After finding dx and dy, we can start going and calculation, doing calculation of loading, if you remember. Now to do the calculation of loading, why we are doing the, uh, the calculation of loading? We are doing it to check for bending, to check for shear, and to check for, for deflection. So here I have illustrated the bending moment diagram and then I'll go and try to find the loading accordingly. Now if you can see here, this is which case? You can see that this is case number four, where we are talking about two edges and edges discontinuous. One short and one long are discontinuous. And this is a corner slab if you remember. Now to draw the to draw the bending moment diagram, first we need to draw our free body diagram. And you can see for for the bending moment diagram in this scenario in this scenario, we have discontinuous part. We don't we don't have any continuity in here. That's why it is zero. In this side, it is continuous. Now, what about the other direction? Here, if we take here, it's discontinuous. So there is nothing. That's why this is zero. And then here, you can see it's continuous. That's why we have a bending moment. Okay. So this is a typical bending moment diagram that we uh, we learn how to do. And we had something called negative x, positive x, if you remember. Now you can see this line is parallel to x, so it should have the coefficients of x. This, this line is parallel to y, so you can see that it is going to take the coefficients of y. Now, the, you can see whenever it goes down, it's positive. When it, whenever it goes up, we call it as a negative. In this span, it's always positive. At the support, it's always negative. Here it says for you y not and x not, and x not and y not are representing a coefficient of zero. If the bending moment is zero, then the coefficient is zero. Okay. Now, for us, for all the, for us to calculate these things, we need to calculate first the loading, which is n or w. Now you can see that for me to calculate w, okay, for me to calculate w. We need to have 1.4 into dead load plus 1.6 into last load. And we have said 
Yeah, say for our scenario, uh, that load is equal to what exactly? That load is consisting of two things. One is finishes, another one is self weight. Now for the for the finishes, it has been given already in the problem that is equal to six point two. If you remember in the problem, self weight we say it is going to be twenty four multiplied by the depth, and the depth was given as zero point one seven five. Okay, so now you can see that this is going to be 1.4, which is the factor of safety for that, multiplied by 24 and 2.175 plus 6.6. And once again, for the life loop, we are going to multiply it by the factor of safety. So now it's going to be 1.6 multiplied by 2.5. Okay, now this is going to be the this is going to be the calculation of W, or and we said they are interrelated terms. So now we have found our value of W equals to 18.56. Okay, equal to 18.56. Now after calculating the N value, we can say that we can use now our moment equation, which is beta multiplied by W multiplied by LX squared. Now beta, we are going to get them from the we are going to get them from the code. W is going to be our loading. Lx square is going to be representing your representing your uh, short direction. Once again, I am assuming that there is another slide which is missing. Let me see you. This is going to be for the calculation of coefficients. We have already stated the x positive, x negative, x naught, x naught. That's one. Are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. They hear. Okay. For those who are unable to hear, can you go and just unjoin and then join once again? Okay. Now once again, we said we have x positive x negative and we said x naught which represents zero phi positive and y negative in this particular scenario now you can see that x naught and y naught are equal to zero because the moment is equal to zero once again y coefficients are equal to zero because if you see my moment is equal to beta into w into lx square now in order for me to get the moment equals to zero Either the coefficient is zero, or the loading is zero, or LX is zero. Now, LX cannot be zero. Loading cannot be zero. So only thing which will make the equation to be zero is the coefficient. So the coefficient of X naught and the coefficient of Y naught is equal to zero. Okay. Now going for the other things which are X positive, X negative, Y positive, and Y negative. Now you can see that we said that this lab is two adjacent edges discontinuous and this is a part of table for this particular case and you can see that we have negative moment and we have negative a positive moment coefficient now how much is your ly over lx in this scenario ly over lx we have found it earlier that is equal to 1.25 okay that is equal to 1.25 25. Now we don't have 1.25, we have 1.2 in the table and we have 1.3. Okay. And then we have the coefficients of y which are easy. Now you can see we can go and get the coefficients of y easily. One is going to be for the negative and one is going to be for the positive. So for the negative, negative moment which is at the edge which is representing y negative. Okay, which is representing y negative 
it is going to be 0 0.045 and the one representing the positive is going to be 0 0.034 okay now what about x for x we said the x coefficients are depending on the ly over lx coefficient or ratio now we don't have 1.25 but clearly, you can see that 1.25 is in the middle of 1.2 and 1.3. Okay, so rather than doing the interrelation, directly you can take the middle value between these two, since 1.25 is in the middle of 1.2 and 1.3. So now what we have done, these are the coefficients for, for y, 0.045 for the negative, 0.034 for the positive. For, for x, we are going to get the average between the two. The average of 1.2 and 1.3 is going to give you 1.25. The average of the coefficient of 1.2 and the coefficient of 1.3 will give you the coefficient of 1.25. So 0 0.063 plus 0 0.069 divided by two will give you 0 0.066. So for the negative, we took these two values and then we divided them by two, which is the average. Okay. And then the same thing we are going to go for the positive. 0 0.047 plus 0 0.051 divided by 2 is going to give you 0 0.049. So we have now the coefficients of x and the coefficients of y. Okay. Any question about these coefficients? Is it clear? How did we use the average here? Okay. Yes. Okay. Going here once again, loading has been calculated. Coefficients we already know. The next step is to calculate the bending moments. Now, it is a matter of substituting in this equation. Betas are available. W is available and excess. So you can see we have substituted 0 0.066 and then multiplied by 18.56, multiplied by 4 squared. And then we have got the values. Now we have four coefficients. It means that we are having four bending moments. One is mx positive, one is mx negative, one is my positive, and the other one is my negative. So four values of moments are there. Okay. The next step after getting the moments, this is where we have stopped in the previous classes. The next step is to calculate the reinforcement. So now for me to, in order to calculate the area of reinforcement, we used to do different steps, if you remember. Okay. Now, my equation. My equation of AS is equal to M divided by 0.95 FY into Z. Do you remember this equation? Which you can get from the codes. So if we go to the codes and then the extract, going for the first page. Okay. Now what we are looking for, we are looking for the equation. So it says for you here, design formula for rectangular beams, slabs, and footing. We are going to click on them. You can see that there are different equations available. So the equation which we are using for the area of reinforcement is M, our AS is equal to M divided by 0.9 FY into Z. Now M, we have calculated for M. So there is no issues about them. FY, there is grade of steel which is already available as FY. The remaining thing is Z. Now we don't have Z, so we need to go and calculate Z. Z equation has been given here. So we have two Zs. One is Z1, and then there is the maximum, which is Z2. Okay, there is another one, which is Z2. So once again, in order for us to calculate, in order for us to calculate uh, Z, or to calculate AS, we need to calculate Z. And you can see that Z is equal to D into 0.5 plus and the root of 0.25 minus K divided by 0.9. And then they said for us, your Z should not exceed 0.95D. 
okay. if you go to them if you go to your uh, code it says for you that the value of that should not exceed okay. so in short <laughs> whatever i'm going to do i'm going to pick the lesser of the two If Z1 is lesser than Z2, then there is no problem. Uh, if Z1 is more than the Z2, then there is a problem because it, it, it exceeds Z2. So what we are going to do, we are going to take Z2 only. So in both scenarios, we are going to take the lesser of the two. Okay. Now you can see, can I calculate Z1? You can see D, you have already calculated it. The only thing remaining for you is K. So I need to calculate K in order for me to calculate Z, in order for me to calculate AS. So once again, we'll go to the BS code, and you will see that there is an equation for K, which is M divided by X to U, dd squared. And once again, all of these things we have, we have taken earlier. So K is equal to M divided by X to U, dd squared. Now you can see M is already with us. FCU is the grade of concrete, so it's with us. D is the width. We have assumed always the slab is having a width of one meter, so it's already there. D is always, or D has been calculated this way. So now all the all the items are available to calculate K. So now first, what we need to do, we need to order. First, we need to calculate K in order to calculate Z, and then we'll be able to calculate A. So start with K, after K will go for Z, after Z will go for, for AS. So turning back to our slide. Now you see, first I took this MX negative, MX negative, we are going to calculate K. Now K is equal to M divided by FCU BD. Now if you remember, there are two Ds. One is DX and the other one is DY. Now, whenever you are calculating for the moment of X, then you should be using D of X. Whenever you are calculating the moment of Y, then you should be you should be using the D of Y. Okay. So once again, what is available here? You can see that we have MX equal to 19.6, and the equation of K is equal to M divided by a squared. square, which M we are referring to now. We are referring to MX negative, which D, since MX, M is for X, then D is going to be for X. And it's, and it's a direct substitution, 19.6, multiplied by 10 to the power of 6. Why? Because you have your grade of concrete is in Newton per millimeter square, or megapascal. Okay? Your concrete is in Newton per millimeter square, so this kilonewton meter needs to be going to Newton millimeter. Kilonewton to Newton multiplied by 1,000, meter to millimeter multiplied by 1,000, 1,000 into 1,000 is 10 to the power of 6 or 1 million. So 35 multiplied by the width, width is 1 meter. So 1 meter to be converted to millimeter, so that's going to be 1,000 millimeter. Dx, we have calculated it earlier to be one. I mean 150. So we have got the value of K to be 0 0.025. Now it says for you here, it says for you here, you have K and you have K dash. Now here the condition says for you, if your K is lesser than K dash, then compression reinforcement is not required. Okay, so once again, if your value of K is lesser than K dash, which is 0.156, then you don't require to be having compression reinforcement. In short, it's going to be singly reinforced. If your K is more than K dash, then it's going to be W. And if you are having it W in the slab, it means that you are having a calculation mistake. Okay, so you need to revise your calculation because you are having a calculation mistake. Okay, it's very rare to see, uh, very, very rare to see a slab that is W reinforced. Okay, so we have 0 0.025. 0 0.025 once again is lesser than. 0.156, so that's going to be a singly reinforced section. And we said from the beginning, if you remember, slabs are going to be singly reinforced because of the lesser loading. Now, the second key is to be calculated is the one for moment of X positive. 
once again we are going to calculate kx positive this is going to be rather than mx negative now it's going to be mx, mx positive once again we are calculating for which direction x or y it is x so we are going to use dx and accordingly we are going to do for the four moments mx negative mx positive and then later on we are going to go for my negative and my positive and you can see here that now rather than using dx we are using dy okay the moment of x will be resisted by the reinforcement of x the moment of y will be resisted by the reinforcement of y that's why we have kept dy and dx any question regarding the calculation here it's a direct substitution any question about them thank you mr no question no okay now after calculating k once again we said we are going to calculate z so we said there are, there are two z for each moment okay there will be one k for each k there will be two z and then we are going to pick one so once again we are going to go for k kx negative which is 0.025 lesser than 0.156 so that's singly reinforced we are going to calculate z1 so once again z1 is equal to d multiplied by 0.5 plus and the root of 0.25 minus k divided by 0.5 now since we are calculating it for x so your d should be dx and your k should be the corresponding one so if you are calculating for kx negative you should be using kx negative here so you can see here we substituted that this is 150 and we have directly use the formula the value is going to be 145.7 okay once again since it's x i'm going to use x z2 what about z2 we said there will be z1 and z2 z2 equation is 0.95 of d once again which d is the one that you are referring to which direction so we are referring to x now so it's going to be dx now you can see we have two z which one is going to be picked we are going to pick the lesser one so this is going to be my z okay. after we finish from kx negative we are going to go for kx positive and once again we are going to go to z1 and z2 we have used z1 you can see the difference between the first one uh, the first one and the second one dx and dx are the same the only thing rather than using kx negative we are using kx positive the corresponding k okay and once again we have got it to be 146.9 z2 is 142.5 and we said we are going to pick the the, the smallest value so the smallest is this one after we finish from x we are going to go for y okay and once again it's a direct substitution so we have z1 rather than using dx now we are using dy this is our value of z1 this is going to be the value of z2 and once again we are going to we are going to compare between them to get the correct or the optimum z and once again z is going to be this one, which is the lesser of the two similarly we are going to do for ky positive z1 and then z2 okay now if you can see or if you can recall the design of two way slab is something similar to the design of one way slab the only thing that the number of moments are increasing and then the length of the question is increasing i mean it's not it's not a, it's not totally different from one way solid slab whatever you have done in uh, in your design of structures one the only thing it's going to be a lengthy process rather than calculating for 1k you will be calculating for a couple of k's depending on how many moments are there okay our asx using the equation so our asx negative is going to be m divided by 0.95 into 460 into z since we are talking about asx negative then we should be using mx negative and z which is for x negative okay so once again if you see mx negative is how much 
we will go here you can see our mx negative 19.6 what about our k what about our zx negative zx negative is going to be 142.5 so if we go now for the calculation of as you can see that this is 19.6 into 10 to the power of 6 why once again because we are having fy fy is in terms of newton per millimeter square so once again you need to keep your moment in newton millimeter okay so we have finished doing this and we have got a, a area a area of reinforcement required to be 315. okay 315 we have minimum area of reinforcement according to the code so from where to get this minimum area of reinforcement we are going to go to our code once again table of content now we need to search for minimum and maximum area of reinforcement so we are going to go for area of reinforcement okay. so you can see here we are having minimum and maximum percentage of reinforcement and there is a table that you have used even previously we have tension reinforcement and we have compression reinforcement so if it's singly you are only having tension reinforcement if it's doubly you are having tension and compression our slabs are singly reinforced so we are referring to tension reinforcement now in tension reinforcement we have three cases one is a flanged beam which is t or l beam section we have flanged beam as well t or l and then the third case rectangular section and then between brackets in solid slabs this minimum should be provided in both directions they refer to x and y directions now you can see that the minimum the minimum reinforcement to be used or minimum percentage of steel in a section to be used in case of fy 250 then it's going to be 0.24 in case of 460 it is going to be 0.13 it means that the lowest percentage to be used in a section of concrete is going to be 0.13 percent of the whole section okay. that's the minimum percentage or minimum requirement of uh, steel to avoid the cracking now you can see we have used 0.13 multiplied by 100 multiplied by the cross section so you can see 0.13 divided by 100 b is 1000 my overall depth is 100 and 175 so we have got our minimum area of reinforcement is 220. if your required area is more than the minimum then you are fine you should supply the reinforcement according to your requirement now, if your area of reinforcement is lesser than the minimum then you need to take the minimum okay for example let's say that we are talking about uh, we are talking about a pack of pens. I went to a bookstore, I went to a library to purchase whiteboard markers. They didn't have single marker. They had a bundle of markers, which are four. Okay, you need to purchase four markers at a bundle. Okay. Now, if I require, if I require two, now two is lesser than four. The minimum is four. You can take only a bundle of four pens. The minimum is four. If you want two, you cannot take two only. You need to take the minimum. Okay. Now, if your value, if you require more pens than four, then you will be taking according to your requirement. If you are having lesser than the required, then you will be only taking the required. If I require two pens, the minimum are four. I'm going to take four. If my requirement is, for example, eight, then I will not take the four. I will take eight, of course. Okay. So in this scenario, you can see that the requirement is 315. The minimum is 228. Whatever I'm going to use is the higher of the two. Okay. The higher of the two. In case of the two and four pence, I took four. In case of four and eight pence, I took eight. So in both scenarios, I took the higher value. Okay. So you can see that the one to be picked is 315. ASX positive. Once again, doing the same thing. 
rather than using a mix negative we are going to use mix positive now and you can see that we have got our area of reinforcement or the required area of reinforcement is 234 and then the minimum is 228 and once again we are going to take the highest of the two so the highest is going to be ASX positive okay. now we have finished from X direction reinforcement X ASX negative is referring to X direction reinforcement but at the top ASX positive is referring to the reinforcement at the bottom okay. direction of X but at the bottom now the same thing goes for the same thing goes for Y okay. the same thing goes for Y you can see that we have ASY negative and then we have the calculation equation the calculated equation so AS once again is equal to M divided by 0.95 FY into Z and you can see that the, the, the required or the minimum or the required let's say required area of reinforcement is 230 the minimum AS is 228 and once again we are having reinforcement more than the minimum so you are going to take the, the higher of the two the same thing goes for ASY positive you will calculate first the required area of reinforcement and then you will go and calculate the minimum you can see now in ASY positive the required area of reinforcement is 174 and you can see that the minimum is 228 so in this scenario we will be taking the highest which is, which is the minimum once again it is the same process that you have done in design of structures one where you have calculated only one AS. Once again, one AS referring to one moment. Now, as there are more moments, there will be more AS. So once again, it's the same design. The only thing that it is going to take a lot of time from you to solve a two-way solve step, depending on how many moments are there. Okay. Now. The last thing, the last thing, the require we have found the required reinforcement. We have found for ASX negative 315, for ASX positive we have 234, and then for Y we have 230 for negative, and then we have 228 for for the positive one. After we find the required, we need to go and have the provided. Okay. So for example, if you remember. If you remember the story of the pen and the white markers, we said the minimum is four. If I require six, okay, if I require six pens, I cannot purchase six pens because the pens are coming in a bundle. Okay, the buns, the pens or the white markers are coming in, in a bundle. So I cannot take six. I need to take two of fours. So four and four is going to be eight. So the minimum is four. I require whatever I require is six. Whatever I'm going to take or provide, I'm going to take eight. So that's the allowed thing to be taken. Are we clear about the concept of minimum required and provided? Yes. Okay. Good. Good. Now here, there are two methods for you to calculate the provided. Okay. There are two methods for you to calculate the provided. Method number two is to refer to the VS code once again. Table of content. We are going to search for table of uh, size and area of bar. We are going to check the table which shows me in the bar. So once again, you have slabs and foundations here. What was the diameter that we are using? What was the diameter we are using? The diameter that we have used is 10. Now, if we go and see, okay. if we go and see,
So we have so we have three hundred and fifteen, and we have two hundred and thirty-four. The diameter from the beginning is with ten mm. We can see that I'm going to take ten mm. I'm going to search for a value which is more than 315 and more than 234. So 10 mm. You can see. For 10 mm, I cannot take 314 for the first one. Because it's lesser than the required. So I'm going to take 393. I'm going to take 200. I mean 393 for this one. Because once again, 314 is lesser than the required. I cannot take it. I cannot take something lesser than the required. Now, what about 234? For 234, I can take 262. So once again, 315, you start always from the lesser value. So 315, 262 is not sufficient. 314 is not sufficient. So we are going to take 310. 393. 393. And then we have 234. 262 itself is sufficient. So once again, here we are going to provide diameter of 10, 10 mm diameter with a spacing of 200. You can see that the spacing here between one bar to another bar is 200. For the second scenario, we have 10 diameter with a spacing of 300. And what about Y direction reinforcement? The same thing. The same thing goes here. You can see we have 230. Now we started. The first one is 262, so it's more than more than the required, so it's, that's fine. 228 is more than the required, so we can use 262. So we will provide 10 diameter. And each and every bar spacing, or the spacing between one bar to another bar, is going to be 300. Okay. So this is one method of calculating it. Another method of calculating it, which is a bit more economical, okay, which is a bit more economical, is to use the concept of area. Okay, the concept of area. Now you can see, for example. So let us say that my diameter, my bar, my bar diameter is, let's say, 10 mm. And we need to get one area, the area of one bar. So area of one bar is going to be by R squared. So in this case, by multiplied by R, which is 5 squared. Is going to give me around 3.14 multiplied by 5 square. So this is going to give me around 78.5. Okay. So this is the area of one bar of 10 mm diameter. Now I want to know how many bars will be there. So how to know how many bars are there? You will see that the slab is designed for a width of the slab is designed for a width of 1,000. Okay. In order for me to know how many bars are there, you need to tell me how many or what is the spacing between one bar to another bar. So for example, if the spacing between one bar to another bar is 250, then I can say for you the total width is 1,000 divided by the spacing, which is 250. So I can say for you, the required number of bars is going to be four. Okay. The required number of bars is going to be four. So now, for example, in this scenario, if I require four bars, the area of one bar is 78.5. If I go and multiply four bars into the area of one bar, this is going to give you four into 
this will give you 300 and 340 okay now 314 is what is the reinforcement of t which is 460 the diameter is 10 and then the spacing between one bar to another bar is 250 mm since it's the same we have taken 250 and we have taken the diameter to be 10 mm now if we return back to our table if we return back to our table you will see if you are using 250 with a 10 mm diameter you will see that you have got 340 so this is the way how to calculate these values in the table okay. now you can see in the table between for example between 150 and 175 there is an interval of 25 between 175 and 200 there is an interval of 25 between 200 and 250 there is an interval of 50 millimeters so you can have as well 225 here okay which is going to be more economical choice so for example if we are going to have or if we are going to produce if we are going to produce now we in our case we have taken 200 okay for the first moment and what i can do rather than taking 250 now you can see here for 250 we are having 314 and then for 200 we are having 393 okay now if you are using 393 nobody can tell you it's wrong but the good designer is a designer who will try to reduce the amount of reinforcement for the client so you can see yours is 315 but you are jumping to 393 which will cost a lot for the client now is there any solution that i can do rather than taking 250 which will fail rather than taking 200 which will be too much i'll take the middle portion which is the interval of 25 so for example i'm going to take 225 so what i'm going to do i'm going to say first now we are having um area let's say total area or area provided is going to equal to area of one bar multiplied by number of bars how to find how to find the area of one bar you can see that we have found the area of one bar using this equation okay so that's going to be by r square number of bars you can find it as 1000 dividing by your spacing so in this scenario it is going to be pi into 5 square multiplied by 1000 dividing my spacing i didn't want to take 250 because it will fail i didn't want to take 200 because it's too much so i can take 225 now if you go and have this particular one you will see 1000 divided by 225 multiplied by 78.5 which we have got earlier we will be having around 300 and we'll be having around 349 349 as your uh, as your uh, area or 350 approximately okay 348 which can be rounded to 349 or 350. okay taking into account that by is more than 340 3.6 are we clear on how to use both methods method number one is available method number two is available now why i have illustrated method number two because not all the bars are available here now you can see we are having 6 8 10 12 16 we don't have 14 now in Oman we are using a lot of 14 14 is not available and by the way this table is not from the code this table is only from the books they have compiled this table okay so for example if you are using 14 either you can use the method which I have told you now about or uh, if you are trying to have a smarter way then you can take the average of 12 and 16 okay so if i take the average of 12 and 16 it will give me 14. Okay. the average of 12 and 16 is going to be 14. so for example if i want 
100 mm spacing for 14. Then I'll take the average of 1130 and 2010. Okay. So once again, 1130 plus 2010. That's for both of them. 12 plus 16. That's 28 divided by 2 will give you 14. So for 14, the reinforcement is going to be 1517. So there are different options for you. You can choose whatever is uh, preferred by you. Any question you have? Any question regarding the calculation of the reinforcement? No, okay. So there will be the next step is going to be shear, and then the step after is going to be deflection, and then detailing. I'll not go for them because I know whatever we have done today is so much. The only thing that we are going to verify our results with the next step. Okay. We are going to verify our results with the next step. So now, once again, we are going to go and return to the Excel and remind me after the class to upload for you the Excel. So this is my Excel. Okay, this is my Excel. We are going to input the values and we are going to check our solution whether it's correct or not. Okay. Just bring here, bring this one here for the meantime. Are you able to see both screens? Are you able to see? Yes, both? Mr. Okay. So now the first thing if you see here, if we return back to our problem, you can see that the you can see that the L Y and L X have been given as five and four. So I need to have a short span to be five, long span to be four. The effect the overall depth or H here has been given for us in the problem to be 175. So I'm using it as 175. The cover we have found it to be 20 and 20. Okay, we have found the cover to be 20 and 20. The grade of steel is 460. The grade of concrete in our problem is C35. Now, self weight has been calculated automatically as 4.2. Extra depth or dead load here is 6.2. Life load is 2.5. First, we need to we need to check our result in terms of loading. Is it correct or not? We go to the loading. You will see that we have got here 18.56, and then in the Excel it's 18.56. Are we okay with that first? Are we okay with the N or W? Mister, which is top cover and bottom cover? Are they you the have, same? You have a cover at the top and you have cover at the bottom. Because you have a reinforcement at the top and you have a reinforcement at the bottom. Right? You have negative bending moment, so you have top reinforcement. And you have positive bending moment, so you have bottom reinforcement. In order for me to protect both of them, we need to provide top reinforcement, bottom reinforcement, I mean top cover, bottom cover. And we need to provide as well side cover. Okay. So here, 18.56, you can see that we have verified. The next step, we need to check our coefficients now. Okay, we need to check our coefficient. Now, you need to be very careful here when, when we are discussing the coefficients. Let me try to make this one bigger so you can see the. Yeah, it is opposite here. Short span is at four, long span is five. Okay. And you can see it's 18.56. 
Okay, what was the thing here? I have input five and four, and you can see directly here it says for you files in LX more than LY. You cannot have your shorter side more than the longer side. So shorter is four, longer is five. Okay. Now you can see here for this problem, okay, for this problem, you can see that it has been kept that continuous from all sides. Uh, we don't have this key. We have uh, two edges discontinuous. So I'll keep edge number one to be discontinuous, and I'll keep edge number two to be discontinuous. Okay. So once again, edge number two and edge number one to be discontinuous. So now two are continuous, two are discontinuous. One long and one short are discontinuous. Okay. Now we need to understand the coefficients which are available here. Now once again, we have short span. We said span means positive, short means x. So x positive coefficient x positive coefficient is 0 0.049 so you can see clearly x positive coefficient is 0 0.049 long span long means y span means positive so y positive is 0 0.034 and you can see that we have got 0 0.034 now edge number one now edge number one here is it discontinuous if you see edge number one and edge number three are connected to x if we extend x and you can see edge number one and edge number three. Now you can see edge number one is discontinuous edge or discontinuous support. Since it's discontinuous support, the coefficient or the bending moment is equal to zero. If the bending moment is zero, it means that the coefficient is zero. So that's why you can see here, the coefficient for edge number one is zero. For edge number three, you can see that there is a continuity since there is a slab. Now, it is going to be x positive or negative since it's at the support it's going to be negative so it's edge number three is corresponding for x negative because it's touching x at the support so it's negative so x negative we go for edge number three we have a 0 0.066 so now if you see x negative is 0 0.066 now going for for y you can see y if you extend it it will touch two and it will touch edge number four now for edge number two, you will see that it's discontinuous. You will see that it's discontinuous. Since it's discontinuous, moment is zero. Since moment is zero, the coefficient is zero. So that's why you can see it as zero here. Now you can see further, you can see further that edge number four is continuous. It corresponds to y and it's at the support, so it's a negative y. So we can see edge number four is having 0 0.045. And our y negative is 0 0.045. Okay. Now we have got our coefficients. After getting the coefficients, we want to verify our values of moment. Okay. We want to verify our values of moment. Now you can see here, we have mx. We have mx negative to be 19.6. So mx negative is corresponding for 0 0.066. So we have it here 19.5. You can see for x, it is 0 here, it is continuous here, so it is going to be for edge number 3, 19.5. Now what about y? It is 0 here, it is a negative bending moment here. For edge number 4, y negative is going to give me 13.36, and here we have it as 13.5 approximately. Now taking into account here, you can see that this is only one decimal. It will not give you one. I mean, more than one decimal, so it's rounding up. And then we have long span, which is representing y positive. <clears throat> so my my y positive is 10.1, and here we have a 10.1. And then we have short span, which is x positive. It is 14.6 here, and we have it here 14.55. So we have verified our result values with the Excel. Next step is to check. Next step is to check the D. <clears throat> now you can see whenever whenever the Excel has talked about X short span or X, you can see that DX is equal to 150. And you can see that your long span is equal to long span, which is Y is equal to 140. Edge number one and edge number three, edge number one and edge number three are connected to X. So for both 1 and 3, you will see that they are using dx only, 150 and 150. y is going to be connected to edge 2 and edge 4. So these are connected to dy. 
and dy is 140 and 140. Okay. We are going to check our k dash. K dash is going to be k dash is going to be uh, one single value, which is 0.156. That is the limit between doubly and singly. After that, we are going to check our uh, our values. Check now. The values of k. Okay, let us check the values of k. Now we have got kx. Okay, we have got our kx negative to equal to 0 0.025 kx negative. So here, if you return back to your figure once again, x is having 1 and 3. 1 is 0. Edge 3 is the negative part. So you can see edge number 3, we are having a coefficient of 0 0.025. And you can see that the coefficient we have calculated is 0 0.025. What about X positive? X positive is for long span. So you can see now your long span is going to be around 0 0.015. Here we have calculated it as one, oh sorry, 0 0.019, and we have calculated it as 0 0.018. This is for X. Okay, now going for Y, once again we have KY negative and KY positive. KY negative, once again, for y, we have edge number 4 and edge number 2. 2 is 0. 4 is the negative one. So if we see for edge number 4, you can see that uh, the k is 0 0.02. We have got 0 0.019. And then here, we have got our long span, which is y positive. We have got it to be 0.15. And then here, it's 0.15. The same thing goes for your z. Same thing goes for your z. Let me just so you can see most of the things. Okay. So we have z. Okay. So you can see we have z1 and z2. For kx negative, kx negative once again is edge number 3. You can see that we have edge number 3 and edge number 4 only. 3 is touching x, 4 is touching y. So going for 3, if we go and see 3, you will see that your uh, your value of Z is 142.5, which we have got here. Edge number 4, uh, edge number 1, once again, is referring to X. Edge number 1 and edge number 3. So edge number 1 is 142.5 and 142.5 for edge number 3. Going for Y, you will see 133 and 133. So for Y, edge number... 4 and edge number 2, so 133 and 132. The minimum area of reinforcement is 228, so you can see that the minimum area of reinforcement, the minimum area of reinforcement is 222, 222, and it goes on. How much is the uh, diameter? You can change your diameter from here. Okay. And then we have how much they have provided. Here you can see that the Excel has provided. Now, there, here are the change which will happen. Um, and the Excel will be providing according to the uh, economical part. Okay. Now, you can modify the Excel in order to get the same result. Now, once again, you are using the table. You are using the table which has intervals of 25 and 50. The Excel will calculate exactly how much is required. Okay. How much is required whether it's 25, sometimes even it's not 25, sometimes it's 20 intervals. So the Excel will calculate exactly as whatever you want. Now, in reality, we cannot have intervals of 10 and 20. Okay. We are having normally intervals of 50, or if we cannot have 50, 25. So I'll teach you next class on how to modify the Excel as well. Last thing that we are going to take, last thing or last thing to explain, you can see here, layer, we have B1, B2. This is very important for you to understand. We have B1, B2, T1, T2, and then we have T1 and T2. B is referring to bottom. T is referring to top. So we say for the span, the bending moment goes down. If the bending moment goes down, it means the reinforcement is down. At the support, then the bending moment goes negative. So negative is up. The reinforcement goes up. 
Okay. So in this scenario, you see edge one, edge one, edge two, edge three, edge four, because they are supports. They have negative bending moments or zero, so they represent top reinforcement. That's why they are T. Span, they represent positive bending moment, so it's bottom reinforcement. So they are representing B. B is for bottom, T is for top. One is for X, two is for Y. So you can see here short span. Span is referring to bottom, short is referring to one. Long span, they are referring to span. Span is going to be B, which is bottom. Long is going to be two. Edge number one, all of the edges are going to be T. All of them are top. You can see now edge number one is touching X and edge number three is touching X. So they should be T1. Top one because of the X. Two and four, they are touching Y, so they should be two. So you can see T1 and T1 for edge number one and edge number three, and then T2 and T2 for edge number two and edge number three. Doing that, we have verified our answers with the Excel for the area of reinforcement. Next class, we are going to take shear and deflection. Hopefully, by that, we will be able to finish a full design of a, of a slide. Do you have any questions for today's session? Okay. What I would I what what would I recommend you since today's class is a lot of a lot of numerical. Uh, it is a little bit expensive. Uh, I would recommend you to go and resolve the question yourself and compare with the answers and the Excel we have provided. Do you have any question? If you don't have any question, then we have finished the session.